Hey guys, this is a long overdue video of, of brushes in GIMP and I'm gonna tell you a lot about brushes in GIMP now and I'm gonna focus on the image brushes and those are the brushes you can find anywhere online and use for any sort of artistic stuff and they're also called the stamp brushes because you can use them as stamps as in fact, um, but there are two other brushes in GIMP and I will skip them in this tutorial, but maybe they will be in another tutorial. And those are the parametric brushes and the animated brushes. But for now, I'm sticking to the image brushes. And like I said, those are the brushes you can find anywhere online. And all you need to do is go to Google or Yahoo or whatever search engine you like and just type in GIMP Photoshop brushes because you can use either the GIMP brushes or Photoshop brushes and both will work in GIMP. And one of the sites that will come up is DeviantArt and this is a very good site for resources sources for brushes. And I already went to DeviantArt and typed in Photoshop brushes and searched for them. And let's say I want to use these lightning brushes. So I'm going to click on the image and then you go to the download page. And always read the artist comments first and their terms of use. And I've read them and it's fine to use in this tutorial thing, but I'm not even sure I am using these. And then go to download and just click on this and download it to your desktop. And if it's a zip file, and I haven't downloaded this because I've got enough brushes already. But if it's a zip file, just unzip it. And then if you have downloaded Photoshop brushes, you will have one file usually. And you have to put that in the correct brushes folder. And if you've downloaded GIMP brushes, you can have many files because every brush is one file, but in Photoshop it comes in a package. But both will work in GIMP. So where will you put them then? Well, for that, go to the following folders on your computer. And if you're on, on like XP, Windows XP, and you need to go to C, Documents and Settings. And this is where your name is. And then dot kim 2.0 and then in the brushes folder and just put the brushes that you unzipped in there. And if you're on Vista, I'm not quite sure, but I think it's called users instead of documents and settings. So that's C users and then your name and then dot kim 2.6 and brushes. And you need to put the the full the sorry the files that you unzipped in there and sometimes when you have downloaded photoshop brushes they weren't uh, they weren't zipped at all so you didn't need to unzip it and you can just put it in this folder um, directly without unzipping and if you're not on windows then you need to go to edit preferences folders brushes and in there it will tell you where to put the brushes in gimp and to show you that this edit preferences and to the bottom here is folders and then there is brushes. So you need to click on brushes and then it will show you where you can put your brushes in. And usually if there are two uh, paths to a folder, use the top one and that will be fine. And when you're back in GIMP, you need to reload your brushes and you can do it by reloading the brushes dialog here and clicking on this refresh brush icon. And if you don't have your brushes dialog open, go to windows, dockable dialogs and click on brushes. And I already had it open, so it opened again, sort of, but uh, it will open for you. And then just click on the refresh brushes. And if you didn't have GIMP open when you were downloading and uh, downloading the brushes and putting them in the correct folder, then when you start it up, you don't have to do this because on startup it will refresh itself. So now we have my, the brushes. I have some brushes here. I'm going to print those are the ones I downloaded and I'm going to open a new image and show you how to use them. And it's really very simple and go to your paintbrush tool. And choose one of your brushes and you can do it in your brushes dialog here. Or you can do it in here in your tool options. And I've chosen one of the lightning ones and I want to make my foreground color white. Like this and then I'll just click and there I've got lightning on my image. And that's how you use brushes as stamps. But there is a but. And I can show you that with other brushes like say this one 
gonna undo this. This is too big, this brush. It's way too big for the image. So what you can do is scale your brush in here in the toolbox. And you can do that by, well, typing in something different or move the scale up and down. Or use your bracket keys on your keyboard. And those are the ones next to the P. And let's see what this does. It's the small, so I'm going to use my big bracket key and then click. And this is what this brush looks like. But it will look differently if I use different tools to apply this brush. So I'm going to undo this by clicking Ctrl C on my keyboard by pressing it, not clicking it. And let you see what happens if I do this with the pencil tool with the same brush. And then the scale needs to go down again by going to my bracket keys. Or just using the scale option. Oops, that didn't go. And then click. And as you can see, the edges here, hard to show with my mouse because I'm still on my brushes. The edges here are all hard instead of the nice image we had before. Now undo it and go back to my papers tool just to show you. Now the edges are very smooth. And that's what the pencil tool does it makes the edges hard. And if you have a slightly transparent brush, nothing will be transparent, it will all be hard edges. So that pencil tool is mostly not good for these sort of brushes. Uh, but there is another option you can use, and that's the airbrush tool. And the airbrush tool, I'm going to scale this down again. And it's a bit too much, make it bigger with my bracket keys. Let's get the airbrush tool. To set the mode to normal, please excuse me, was wrong from last time. Airbrush tool will, if you click once, you will just show see it very vaguely. But I'm gonna undo this by pressing Ctrl C on my keyboard and then click very long, and you see it's much darker now. I'm gonna undo this again, and when you click very, very, very long, it will become uh, more visible and now it's completely as visible as it was with, with the paintbrush tool so with the airbrush tool it only is part of well, click a little bit click a little bit longer and you get different sort of shades so that's how you can use the airbrush tool for this sort of brushes and you can brush it in like this and get a nice effect and well just try it out you can get nice effects with the airbrush tool. But if you want to use it for a stamp, usually the paintbrush tool is your best option. And then when you are using a tablet, and I'm going to undo this again. When you're using a tablet, you can also choose brush dynamics. And in the upcoming GIMP version 2.8, this is 2.6, there will even be more brush dynamics. And when using a tablet, you can cha change the pressure of the opacity, the hardness, the size, color, whatever. Just try it out and you get more, um, more, more options and diversity of what you can do with your brushes. So I think this is all on stem brushes and I'm sure you can find many ways to use them and maybe even some things that I haven't discovered yet. And I hope... Um, that what I told you was a little bit clear. And maybe next time I will be telling you a little bit more about animated brushes and parametric brushes. But for now, this has been a tutorial on the regular most used image brushes. And I hoped that it helped. And thank you for watching. And if you like my videos, then maybe you'd like to subscribe and watch my other videos as well. And again, thank you for watching.